Over the years, DAWs have got more and more advanced with new features and workflows constantly being added. I'm Era from EraTheProducer.com and here's 20 FL Studio tips that I wish I knew sooner. <laughs> so before we get into it, I should say that I have only been using FL Studio as my primary door for about a year, so I'm still learning new things about it. This list is just a collection of things that I found out since I started, but wish that I knew sooner. The first few things on this list are going to focus on performance and quality of life. I think every producer can relate to having a session crash on you after you forgot to save it and this is where the FL Studio backup saves are going to have you covered. By clicking options and then coming into file settings, you're going to be able to set how often the backup saves are going to be generated. I'd recommend having this set to every 5 minutes and before risky operations. These backup files can then be found in documents, image line, FL Studio, projects, and back up. To help prevent these crashes in the first place, you might want to keep tabs on the CPU usage of your plugins. Some VSTs use a lot more CPU than others and over time this can build up and lead to projects crashing. Using the plugin performance monitor is going to allow you to see which of your VSTs are taking up the most CPU. To see this you first want to hit play on your track and then come up to the view tab and select plugin performance monitor. In this window you're going to see all of your VST plugins in order of how much CPU they're using. Once you've identified the problem plugins, you can then just bounce them down to audio and save CPU. There's another really useful setting for saving CPU that's hidden away in the menus and that's the smart disable for all plugins. When you're working away on a large project, you're going to mount up many instances of plugins. Some of these plugins won't be getting used throughout the whole project and that's what this setting is going to take care of. Smart Disable is going to take any plugin that's not doing anything and switch it off until it's actually needed. To switch on Smart Disable, you first want to come up to Tools. Then come into the macros drop down and then toggle switch smart disable for all plugins. Zipped loop packages are a different way of saving your projects in FL Studio. Saving your files this way is going to create a zip file containing the FLP as well as all of the samples that were used in the channel rack. This is the best way to send a project file from one FL Studio user to another as all of the samples and information needed are going to be found within that zip file. This also comes in really useful when you've moved your drum samples from one folder to another. To make a zip loop package, you first want to come up to file and instead of going to save, you're going to want to hover over export. And then from the project section, you can select zip loop package. The browser in FL Studio has finally been updated, making searching for samples super easy. Just enter your search term in the box at the bottom and all of the samples that match are going to be displayed. You can then take this one step further by adding a tag to the sample or adding it to your favorites so it can be found even easier. These next few tips are going to focus on MIDI and the piano roll. This first one actually blew my mind when I found out about it. Now I know it's old news that you can use your typing keyboard as a way to put down MIDI notes, but did you know that you can lock these notes to certain scales? To do this, you just want to come up to the typing keyboard button and right click it, and then from here you can select your key and scale. And now every note that you press on your keyboard is going to be in key. When I'm working in the piano roll, I sometimes like to hear what a chord sounds like without having to keep spamming play every time that I've changed a note. Pressing Alt or Option on your keyboard and right clicking over the chord is going to allow you to listen to it without having to keep stopping and starting the loop. You can also drag while right clicking and this is going to allow you to pan across the loop and listen to different parts. So let's say you've made a fire 8 bar loop that's got tons of elements in it. And sure you can select from all your different channels by using the drop down in the piano roll but if your mouse has side buttons a simple click is going to bring up that same menu meaning you can switch more quickly and easily. To some producers building interesting chord progressions can be quite tricky. Luckily there's a feature that's built into the piano roll that can help. Coming up to the drop down in the piano roll you're going to be able to use the stamp feature. From this menu you can pick from all sorts of different chords including basic triads to more complex ones like suspended and diminished chords. Once you've selected the chord that you want you can then just place it down with one click. In genres like trap and drill it's very common that you'll hear the kick and 808 playing very similar patterns. So in this beat I already have an 808 pattern laid down and I want the kick to follow the exact same rhythm. Of course the first step is going to be to copy the pattern from the 808 and paste it into the kick. Now we've got the same pattern inside our kick, you want to make sure that all of the notes are selected and press ALT and K. This will bring up the transposer window where you can then just make sure that C5 is selected and hit accept. So now your kick has the exact same rhythm as your 808 but all of the notes are correctly pitched to C.
Every DIW is going to have some sort of metronome that's going to keep you in time. The only trouble with the FL Studio metronomes is I find them all way too loud. There are some ways that you can change the actual sound of the metronome, but this tip I'm just going to be showing you how to lower the volume. The first thing you need to do is come up to options and then go to audio settings. From here you just need to route your metronome to a certain track on the mixer where you can then control the volume of it. To the left of this you'll see browser preview track and this is going to control the volume of the samples that are played from your browser. The middle mouse wheel has quite a few functions in FL Studio like zooming in and out, scrolling left and right on your mixer and adjusting parameters. Another really useful function of the mouse wheel is clicking it to reset a parameter back to its default. You can also do this by holding alt and clicking but I feel like the mouse wheel way is just a bit easier. Some of the options from the right click menus are going to have this dotted line under them. Well, these are actually shortcuts that can be selected by pressing the letter that's underlined. For example if I right click into this pattern instead of clicking make unique I can just hit M on my keyboard and it's going to do it for me. You should take some time to work out what shortcuts can be used as you'll be surprised at how much this can actually speed up your workflow. One of my least favourite things about FL Studio has to be the manual routing system. I have learned to like it a little bit more though after learning this shortcut. If you select all of the tracks from the channel rack and then just hit Ctrl and L, all of these tracks are going to be sent to the mixer and the best thing is they're going to take their name and colour with them. Sometimes you can put down a really solid drum pattern but one of the sounds just isn't cutting it. There was a hard sample that you used two or three minutes ago but now you can't remember the name of it. If this happens to you then all you need to do is open the sampler track in question Right click next to where it says file and you can then view the sampler history. Another thing I really wish that I knew earlier is that you can actually transpose as many tracks as you want from the channel rack all at once. This one's as easy as selecting all of the tracks that you'd like to transpose and then coming up to the drop down menu and hitting transpose selected. You then just need to enter a positive value to pitch everything up and a negative value to pitch everything down. Switching to the razor tool and making cuts is as easy as pressing C and then just dragging over your clip. But did you know you can actually make cuts to your clips regardless of which tool you're using by holding down the shift button and dragging over the area that you'd like to cut. And if you hold down right shift and then right click and drag, you're going to make a cut and delete the shorter end. Bringing the playhead to a certain point in time and then hitting control and T is going to allow you to add these locators which can be used to label certain parts of your track. These locators come in really useful when you've got quite a complex arrangement and you need to differentiate which parts of the track are where. One thing that's essential to me is making sure that my mixer is nice and organised. Using a routing tip from earlier is going to help you with colour coding your mixer, however you can organise everything a little bit more by using docking and separators. I like to have all my bus tracks docked to the left and all of my send tracks docked to the right. If you'd like to dock any tracks to the left or right then you just want to select them and come down to the option dock to and then select left right or middle. Then you'll also see that in between my instrument groups I have these separators. To add these you just want to right click the track and simply select separator. The separator will then be added to the left of the track that you selected. There's loads of times where I'd like to take one effect and all of its settings and paste it from one mixer insert to another. By clicking on the VST that you'd like to copy you can then hover over where it says save preset as and simply just drag this onto a different mixer insert. And the plugin as well as all of its settings will then be copied to this insert. This is also going to work for entire mixer states by right clicking on the track, coming into the file drop down and then dragging save mixer track status. So those were my 20 tips for FL Studio that I just wish I knew sooner. Let me know in the comments how many out of the 20 you already knew. And if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new from it then make sure to hit the thumbs up button before you leave and if you're new to the channel then do me a favour and hit that subscribe button too. Big shout out to anybody that made it all the way to the end of the video. I've been Era. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one.